What's going on guys? This is Leo Guild Wars and today I got a brand new video on how to make money at such a low level. And I'm just making this video because it's been long requested so let's get started. So the first technique we're going to try is the passion flower farming and this is currently limited to the month of May of 2013 because of the event of the secret south sun. And as you can see here I'm on my level 17 necromancer. I'm just running across the map farming the passive flora nodes. Now you may be wondering, these nodes are for level 65 plus. Plus, how can you farm it? Essentially, the main whole controversy is you're gonna get ruined plant fiber because you won't be able to farm the passion fruits, but you still have a chance of getting the passion flower, which is for any level. And once you stack enough, you can sell each of them, and each of them go for at least 15 silver plus for each flower. On average, you'll probably get one to three flower on one run. So that's an easy 15 silver, and you're at a low level. 15 silver is a lot when you're like level 10 or 5. You can do this at any level which is pretty amazing. This is probably the best farming technique for low levels as of right now but it's limited so you guys better farm away. Yeah you just go across the map hopefully you get passion flowers. Now the cool thing is if you're having trouble finding passion flowers you will come across blooming passifloras which give you a hundred percent chance of getting passion flowers so I find that pretty helpful and you just make so much money from this farming technique you get 15 silver from one flower you can get up to three to four or five flowers in one run and that's an instant at least half a gold in less than I'd say 10 minutes So the route in regards to the passion flower technique, you would start off at the Pearl Islet, you would get MF up from the Negotiator NPC, go through Dappled Shore, making your way past Keel Outpost Waypoint. And from there, you're going to go through South Sun Shoals, you're going to pass the Drift Glass, making your way past the Scoured Plains, and finally into the Owen Refuge. Now here we got a customized map of South Shore that I put together in less than 5 minutes. <laughs> Um, essentially, it just shows you where the Passiflora nodes are and the Blooming Passiflora nodes. Now keep in mind that the Blooming Passiflora nodes can change from time to time. I don't know, but it's just random. But these three spots are usually where they are. Now this map is very useful if you guys are kind of new to this method. So just try it out. Yeah, just pause the video if this time is too short. Now on to the Dynamic Events and World Event. Now this is just a great way to farm. It's not as strong as getting gold when you're at a low level but it's a great way to interact with everyone. When you're doing a world event or a dynamic event, the way the system works is Guild Wars 2, they make the monsters that spawn more susceptible to dropping more loot, more loot bags, and just in general more materials. So that's a plus for you because you can just loot it and sell it. And when you're doing world events, there are chests at the end of it. You just get nice stuff. The higher level you get, obviously the more related the drops are to your levels. I mean, the more upscale the items are so it just keeps getting better and better the more you level keep in mind once you find a nice event chain it's just gonna keep going and going it's like an express train can't be stopped <laughs> and then once the event are done or completed you do get an extra reward with extra XP karma and you know a bit of gold the third thing I want to talk about is the South Sun chain event that's currently running with the event right now and I'm not gonna go into much detail there's a video I posted about it so just check that out it's just another alternative to to dynamic events that I find gives a much better reward because there's gonna be two bosses and it's super easy to kill because there's just a giant zerg and in those two chests you get you can get lots of rares at a low level you'll start getting rares at level 36 and you're gonna get karka shells yeah they sell for one silver each mining and harvesting can't say much about this once you're just leveling just mine and harvest the hell out of everything anything you find just demolish it save it up and just sell sell everything usually you should sell when it's in a bulk because when you sell bit by bit it's not much and I usually sell it with a stack of 250 and yeah at the end of this video I'm just gonna give you guys a nice little tool or website that helps you find everything you need about mining now I'm gonna get into heart quests. I know heart quests it doesn't give you the most rewards but when you're at such a low level any kind of copper income adds up. It really adds up. I remember when I started when I was really low level I was just like how the hell do I get gold and just gradually when I'm doing the map completion I just it just increases the higher zones you get and you're starting to do the, the heart quest they give you like two silver each completion and you can pretty much finish it in like less than 30 seconds or one minute if 
if you really put your mind to it. But at low levels, you only get like a couple of coppers, but it really adds up. So I made about 1 gold and 44 silver in probably less than an hour. But keep in mind, this is because the passion flowers are very high at the moment due to the event. So without the event, you're probably not going to make as near on a low level character. So here's just a brief overview or ranking of which technique gives you the best income. So the first one's going to be passion flower farming which generates the most revenue or income out of the five. And the second is going to be the south sun cove event chain during the secret of south sun event. Third being is going to be the dynamic event. Fourth is mining and harvesting earth bang. <laughs> and the fifth is going to be the hearth quest. Now keep in mind the first and seconds just going to be temporary as of May 2013 because that's during the event. So the passion flower price increased during that segment of time. For the second one, the event is only active during the month of May. In terms of mining, this website really helps the wiki.guildwars2.com and it just basically has everything. You just search whatever node you want and they have every freaking description about it. For world events, I use Guild Wars 2 stuff and basically this website has implemented the new API system and it just has the correct timers for every boss, which is so useful. And finally, if you're looking for dynamic events, Events corresponding to your level on Guild Wars Guru, someone posted a nice little guide on different event chains from level 1 to 80. And that's everything, guys. I hope this really helps for you new people out there or just people in general that haven't been aware of making money at such a low level. This is what I do every day when I'm just leveling my newbies. So good luck, guys. Leo Guild Wars over now.